Well, that, my my question for Andy is kind of similar to what Colin already said. Didn't your faction get beat by just one guy? I haven't played yes. Dead Space, so you can basically say whatever you want. Not gonna <laughs> well, well here's, here's the thing. End of Dead Space 1. Hello all and welcome to Law Crimes. This is the next episode of Versus. It's a nice little cheeky idea we have where we pit either two characters, factions, or generally anything. We sort of smash them against each other and see which one comes out victorious. My name is Hal and I'm joined here by Eli, Andy, and Colin. Say hello, boys. Hello. <laughs> Somewhere there in the hello. ether. And uh, today will be an episode, um, hope everyone's feeling a bit hungry, because we're going to be devouring uh, a big topic here, it is Tyranids versus Necromorphs. Yes, uh, Colin will be representing the Warhammer time, or oh, Warhammer side this time, for some reason, because usually he's against Warhammer. <laughs> <laughs> it's about time we did one for the team. <laughs> uh, Warhammer finally needs a win, what can I say? Oh, okay, Ooh. he's going. Or he's already, he's already uh, arrogant. Dang. He's already arrogant with it. He has been, uh, funny enough, as a Warhammer content creator, been trashing on it <laughs> for a good <laughs> minute. Um, and he's been victorious. I think he undefeated still, if I'm right, Colin. Hell yeah. Still undefeated. Uh, but challenging that today is Andy, with a, representing with a bit of Dead Space Necromorphs. Um, I'm going to ask you guys, Colin, how are you feeling? Are you feeling confident? I'm feeling very confident in the uh, in the power of the Tyranids. Uh, the hive mind is with me. Uh, you know, it's. Uh, I think. I think I've got this. He's got it. Uh, he may not have a working pancreas, but he's going to have a working <laughs> victory <laughs> in this one. <laughs> Sorry, boys. Uh, Andy, how are you feeling? Feeling very confident. Um, I am. I am infused with the zeal of that um, that meme of the guy from Dead Space Three with the two grenades in his hands who jumps yeah. on the car and goes, oh, yeah. "That's me right now." He's just like me. He's just like me. He's just like me. Oh, that Perfect. voice actor put his all into it. Yeah, <laughs> I wonder what he did to prepare for that. Like just running around the car park outside, just like I'm gonna do it. You know? He went to he went to some death metal concerts and came back. Like, right, right. <laughs> Had a conversation with his mother-in-law. Oh, man. I know. I'm joking. I'm joking. Oh, I like I? my mother in law. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have one. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, do. I do too. Don't worry. <laughs> we all like his nice mother in law. Uh, <laughs> uh, with that being said, though, we begin with round one. This is your chance to either speak of the highs or, you know, basically state your case, the opening uh, arguments. Colin, I believe you are first. Are you ready? Muted is what I was. <laughs> Good stuff. He was. Oh, Colin, are you ready? like say like just... the earth say muted there. <laughs> muted. <laughs> I I am I am ready to go. Well, Nerevar, uh, please your time <laughs> begins We're not now. Not again. <clears throat> ah, well, I uh, I present to all of you my case on why the Tyranids are simply just better than the Necromorphs. So just start off simple. What are the Tyranids? Uh, just big bugs from outside the galaxy. But you might think big bugs, well, you know, what does that mean? Uh, the size of houses, the size of titans. Uh, they've got something for every situation. Uh, these these fine, I, I don't know, I was going to call them fine folks, gentlemen. but that doesn't seem quite, <laughs> yeah, the fine gentlemen of the Tyranids <clears throat> came from outside the galaxy, so we've already got a leg up on dead space with that one. I mean, necromorphs, I, at, at best, it's Maybe they came from outside, maybe they're native. There's nothing to say whether they did. The Tyranids not only have come from outside the galaxy, but we know for a certain they've taken at least one other galaxy because the, uh, the Swarm Lord's little sword things are made of a crystal that you can't find in the Milky Way. It just does not exist in this galaxy. So the Tyranids uh, <clears throat> already have at least one confirmed galaxy under their belt, whereas uh, the Necromorphs, from my understanding, uh, are have, still having trouble with uh, an engineer, although I, I shouldn't be that rude to Isaac Clark. He is a weird one. Uh, this, this this isn't about Isaac. Isaac's, Isaac's great. This is about the Necromorphs and how they're simply inferior. Uh, the salt's already coming early. What can I say? Uh, the 
Tyranids made landfall uh, many times throughout the gal- uh, galactic history, which saying that about galactic the galaxy, landfall doesn't sound quite right, but what are you going to do? Uh, they showed up in M35, M36, they fought the Imperium many times, but the Imperium didn't know what they were fighting because the Tyranids were simply that violent of a threat they purged they either purged history or did their best to forget it and of course there's a fact that you generally don't get survivors from a tyranid invasion uh they made a landfall for the you know the big the big reveal everyone knows they're a thing now uh, towards the modern setting of warhammer 40k when they devoured several dozens of planets without being stopped ultramarines tried to stop them and uh and they failed a couple times before they finally got that one right uh, and even then, you might say, oh, so the Tyranids failed their initial appearance. Well, they didn't really fail. Uh, High Fleet Bayamoth, as it was, didn't uh, wasn't destroyed. It lived on in splinter fleets to bother the, bother everyone for forevermore. And then they just kept coming. Two more major High Fleets. God only knows how many minor ones. A whole lot of them is the answer. And they would just, they just go around and devour planets whole. Uh, there's plenty of ways they do this. Uh, there's, of course, the obvious big ol' invasion of bugs that you see and uh, get frankly offended by as they swarm down. Again, can't, can't not do it. Uh, they swarm down and devour planets whole. Orcs, Mechanicus, human, space marine, doesn't matter. You're all food equally. Uh, they have <clears throat> more subtle methods. They have, even just amongst the Tyranids themselves, uh, there's, you know, there's lictors, there's stuff like that where they kind of go behind enemy lines uh their magic there's another leg up that the tyranids have uh, they have psyker powers because the hive mind is so overwhelmingly powerful uh that it just knows how to do magic without being a wizard it's just that much of an overwhelming presence uh they have <clears throat> oof, pardon me uh and they even shut down other people's wizard power so it doesn't matter what uh what you're working with uh the tyranids have something to take care of it uh, they outnumber pretty much everyone in the galaxy uh, on a given tactical level. There are always going to be more Tyranids than your army on the battlefield. Uh, and they're quite big and powerful. Uh, we got Ravener Broods, Hive Tyrants, Turvagons, Tyranid Warriors. Something for every possible situation, because that's what the Hive Mind's all about. Ranged, uh, you don't want to get hit by Tyranid Bioplasma. Oh, that's something else, by the way. Uh, they're so advanced that they make plasma as just biologically uh they can they have something to hit you in every situation with uh but you might be thinking well, you know they that's not too subtle uh well allow me to introduce you to the gene stealers who are uh, still i'm going to count them in this argument because they don't exist if you don't have tyranids the tyranids seed a world with the gene stealer infection and then suddenly you don't even know if your friends are your friends anymore they could be under the sway of the hive mind um, <clears throat> so quite frankly, you don't even need to fight the Tyranid High Fleet to lose to the Tyranids. The Gene Stealer cult may damn well just take care of the problem before the Tyranids ever show up. And then they get a nice snack, they grow in numbers, and then they move on to do it once again. Uh, there is quite simply... And your time stops there, unfortunately. <laughs> He's... Well, he sounds like he's still got more, like there's a full <laughs> like document to go through there. Uh, unfortunately, we had to cut that there, though, because it's time for Andy for his opening statement. Andy, are you ready? Yes, sir. And your time begins now. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to talk about the big bad of the Dead Space franchise, the Necromorphs. Now, the Necromorphs are the mutated and reshaped corpses of the dead, resurrected by extraterrestrial beings uh, through an infection drawn from the genetic coding of the marker devices created by the so-called Brethren Moon Alien. So imagine moon-sized, corpse-created beings. Absolutely terrifying. I mean, the High Fleet's pretty interesting and pretty terrifying as a High Fleet might you might visualize, but could you imagine an entire planet moseying on over to chew on your bones. It's pretty terrifying. Uh, these gigantic spacefaring creatures composed entirely of the dead um, send signals to prey on the intelligent life forms and broadcast their message across the galaxy to do their bidding. They've already claimed entire alien civilizations into their form and the necromorphs are their foot soldiers. They're the ones who do all the 
the slicing and dicing of their enemies of their prey. Because this is the thing, necromorphs don't have enemies, they just have prey. And when they chop them up and dice them and slice them, then they reform the dead material into a new necromoon. And we have no idea how many of these things there are. They're absolutely indomitable in how they just systematically pick people apart and then consume their biomass, much like to the Tyranids. Um, they emit these frequencies capable of driving their food sources insane. If you've played the Dead Space games, you know firsthand that some people, they get dementia. Other people go into suicidal rampages like our good old friend from Dead Space 3 with the grenades. Uh, other people start and join cults similar to the Gene Stealer cults, but a bit more insidious. And some people they hallucinate and they think they're doing the right thing and are all the while being manipulated into doing the bidding of the necromorphs uh, before they're butchered by their sharp, bony, slicey hand things, whatever you would call them. Their glaives and blades made from their own bones. Uh, the necromorphs themselves are incredibly deadly in combat and are merely the puppets of the Brethren Moons. And despite their lack of consciousness, they do have a hive mind quality and they have proven capable of harvesting the galaxy time and time again to feed and reproduce. Colin mentioned, oh, the, the Tyranids have already conquered at least one galaxy. We have no idea how much the Necromorphs have done because they don't leave survivors. They don't leave much trace of their existence. They just get the job done. And we have no idea if they're a galaxy-faring or a universe-faring species. But they are driven solely to acquire more bodies and to spread their infection. These creatures are not relenting and they do not fall victim to, to, to anything they combat can't match them because point blank through the marker devices and the the hallucinations and emitted frequencies they create their prey do the work for them before they even get a chance to nom on them physically tyranids are pretty cool and they do have a hive mind quality but i have no idea if they would even be able to comprehend I, I don't even know if they'd be able to defend themselves from the emitted frequencies of the markers. They are so powerful. We already know that the necromorphs have consumed an alien species before, which was genocided by the Brethren Moons. I don't think the Tyranids would have much of a better choice because here's the main factor of this argument. The necromorphs are dead. It doesn't matter how many Tyran Tyranids there are. The necromorphs kill a few Tyranids. They consume them. They make Tyranid necromorphs. And then the more they kill, the more they get, the more they kill, the more they get. And a loss for the Tyranids is a gain for the Necromorphs, and they cannot stem that tide. In its most insidious form, it would infiltrate the Gene Stealer cults and the Hive fleets, and it would tear themselves apart from within before the Necromorphs through the Brethren Moons have even gone close. They're capable of mutilating the bodies of their hosts into con inconceivable forms to further spread their infection, and they make specialized forms through those they infect. Like, just imagine the Tyranids. Colin mentioned, for example, they have the plasma incorporated into their weapons. We have no idea what the Necromorphs would do to the Tyranids because we only have humans and basic, basic Isaac Clarke. Like, like, Isaac Clarke is cool, but like, compared to Vortigay, underdeveloped civilizations. A Tyranid Necromorph would be terrifying and it would consume themselves from within. They would, we, from humans, they already make slashers, leapers, lurkers, and other utterly horrifying creatures. Tyranids would be a completely different story. And the guardians, the apex form of the human ones, were immortal, functionally immortal, where you killed them, they come back again and again and again. And like that, the necromorphs would get the job done because they would never stop coming. And that's my, uh, my first Perfect. taste. Oh, straight on time. Wow. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, very time. nice. Very nice. I think, uh, Eli, what are your current thoughts slash any questions for the boys? Yeah, I think uh, both the contestants have some good things to say. I didn't know much about the necromorphs or necrophages, whatever, before, but uh, I will say Andy has put in a good word for them because I, I, when coming into this, I thought that he had no chance because I barely knew anything about Dead Space, but uh, he makes him sound pretty powerful to me. Mm. Obviously, the Tyranids, Colin, put them in a good light. Tyranids are scary. They devour planets. They have a lot of variety, it seems, and uh, they're theoretically a, possibly a bigger threat. It's hard to say. It's hard to scale differently. Uh, but yeah, I have some questions. Uh, let me see if any of these are actually good questions, but... Uh, yeah, we'll just ask them. Who... Uh... Who, who has the... I'll ask you both. Who do you think has cooler origins? 
because uh, it might be they, they seem to both Colin have almost no origins. Uh I mean, I I think that I honestly that's maybe this will be a cop out and make my, not make my argument sound good, but I think that one's down to personal taste. I mean, <laughs> uh, Tyranids <clears throat> completely extra galactic. They have nothing to do with anyone. Uh, they're just it's coming in from God knows where. Uh, so, and they're just this unending swarm of locusts that, like I said, nothing to do with anyone, but everyone in the galaxy is horribly afraid of them, uh, including, uh, the Silent King, uh, who came all the way back because he walked into a high fleet and was like, I think, uh, I think this is going to be a problem, <laughs> uh, which I, I might, I might bring that up in my, in my next stage. Uh, we'll, we'll save that for later. Uh, whereas the Necromorphs, I think if you, I think if you like the idea of this, like, it's the, like assimilator kind of thing where it's like it comes mm. from the progress of people like uh, with the markers and whatnot I think if you like this that kind of thing uh, you'll probably like the Necromorphs more if you like a completely out of context problem you'll probably think the Tyranids have a cool origin uh, I think I think that one's down to personal taste this is a good answer what, what say the Andy uh, well, th- I think the, the trouble with that question is both of us are like, we have no idea where either one comes from. Right, yeah, what, what, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> like, all we know mysterious. is what we know. And it, it's that whole thing of like, <laughs> the Tyranids are definitely from another galaxy. The Necromorphs might be, but they leave so little trace of what they've done. We have no idea where they came from. Are they a biological weapon? We don't know. Are they a... a, a like, did, did that just happen? Headed- did they just happen naturally? We don't know. All we know is they're scary, and they ate my friend, and now he's <laughs> running after me with blade hands, and I'm scared. Mm, and we, nice. yeah, we do know that space is dead because they ate most of the things in it. <laughs> yeah, that and there's no one left to right. say, "Oh, oh they the didn't even give him a name." <laughs> hey, I'll ask. I'll ask one more question. Uh, Billions. Which one of more. <laughs> which, which one of these factions would take over a planet faster? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to say the Tyranids. Uh, uh, the dead space, the the Necromorphs uh, need to they plant the marker, uh, and then they need to you know get the because that's a uh, from my memory dead space. That's how it works. They plant the marker, the species develops and grows uh, with the marker as a focal point, and then at a certain point you hit convergence, which is where the marker is uh, powerful enough that it just. It's the dinner bell. It's the dinner bell, and uh, it just starts <laughs> ding, ding. sucking people into the sky, which is quite horrifying when that happens <laughs> i will admit but the tyranids it's like oh there's a high fleet here now goodbye planet <laughs> although you like say a- that at the end of dead space <clears throat> 3 the 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 cliffhanger for dead space 3 because we're never going to get dead space 4 was no. the the brethren runes attack earth and it's just a, an earth sized being with its tendrils just latching onto earth and just nomming on it raw style and you're like oh no and there's Nomming several of them raw style. that oh, is true dear. and th- there was there was even several of them but that uh to me i don't think that was standard because the marker not standard to be, procedure no no the, the standard procedure seemed to be the marker which requires uplifting an entire species to a point where the necromorphs are like all right there's enough of you it's dinner time yeah the, the, the modus operandi of the necromorphs <clears> is we're going to be very patient and take our time because we are the apex predator we don't have to rush anything for the most part we'll just let the species do their own thing and then we'll eat them at our leisure at the most efficient possible way in as short a space of time as possible but you have to build up to it it's kind would... of a uh, win may lose the battle but win the war kind of scenario. exactly Mm. I would like to posit that that is a that is a fine way to say much slower than the Tyranids would. <laughs> <laughs> well, the it only thing about question. that is it would scale depending on the civilization. So I feel like if it was the ne- if it was the Necromorphs versus the Tyranids, it's a lot more people. It's a lot more bodies than dead space era human civilization. That's a lot more food. You're going to upscale. I do have a. I think I've got one question, which is usually a, one of my favorites. Um, by the metric of them being both monsters, and we're not going for pretty here, but describe to me perhaps a unit or a particular monster or creature that is the best looking slash best drip. That's my favorite question. Best drip uh, of your own. So if I was like, oh, oh, that looks cool, which one do you think would best represent that? Uh, Colin, is there a particular unit, one that you maybe stands out? Uh, personally, I, I quite like the Trigon. 
Uh, it's got like the snake body, but unlike the Red Terror, it doesn't look like just an absolute abomination of a model. Uh, Red Terror, by the way, for those who don't know, if you look up the old Red Terror Feels model, red. that might be one of the worst Games Workshop <laughs> models ever produced. Uh, but the Trigon is this big, horrifying snake thing with all these, like the... Mandibles. I don't want to call them claws. Well, yeah, it's got mandibles, but it's got like the pincer. Pincers is also wrong. It's got spikes. We're going to call it spike arms because I got a no better word. Uh, but <clears throat> that's my personal favorite. If you want, you can find pretty much any Tyranid model and be like, that's my favorite for X reason. Like the Hive Tyrant has a, has a gun and these hor like horrendously huge, sharp bio swords. Uh, Male Scepters, Exocrines are these big lumbering beasts. Uh, that can shoot you, by the way. Uh, Hive Norn Crones. Emissary seems to be a pretty new model on the board. Oh, yeah. N Norn Emissary is... Uh, Slaps hard. Just <laughs> absolute beautiful. Uh, the Neurolictor, I would put a child in a Neurolictor just straight up. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, God. Uh, no questions needed. Uh, oh, well, with that uh, being said, though, uh, I think, oh, <laughs> give some time to Andy. Andy, what was your rebuttal of, like, you know, you want to draw people in and say yeah my faction looks way cooler what do you show them i mean the the main draw of the necromorphs are they are absolutely disgusting looking but they're also incredibly adaptable so for example the uber morph is this necromorph that basically every time you cut it down it just regenerates it's got two big lanky arm-sized blades coming out of each palm and it just chops you down and it's just gonna keep coming at you and every time you think you've killed it it's going to come back up the hive mind is this gi gargantuan like skyscraper sized being that should it's required can just consume swathes of people or in this case xenos and it has multiple tendrils and it's that thing of like we have no idea what the necromorphs would look like if they were starting to incorporate the tyranids but when you look at the tyranids on their own you think that's pretty cool but imagine a tyranid with multiple more arms with blades coming out of them and the ability to maybe project plasma and bile and just take take a Tyranid and crank it up to 10, basically. Like, oh, Tyranids, they're pretty cool. Imagine if they were cooler and dead. That's the draw. So you're saying that Tyranids have basically gone, this is my aesthetic and I'm not changing, whereas the Necromorph <laughs> is like, I'm not even in my final form yet. They're like, oh, does my skin look big in this? It's like, yeah. yeah, yeah. Does my <laughs> skin look big in this? Uh, speaking of does my skin look big in this, uh, we're going to move <laughs> on to the next uh, round. Uh, Colin, you're up first. This is, again, could be more talking up your own faction or maybe cutting down Andy's. Are you ready? I'm ready to do both. <laughs> and your time begins now. Well, I think I'll start with uh, talking up the own faction a bit. I mentioned the Silent King earlier. I'd like uh, just a reminder for those of you who either forgot, aren't too familiar with the guy. Uh, this is a Necron, the, a Necron, the Necron, uh, who ruled over all of them during the War in Heaven. And on his command, they shattered their gods. And uh, that's not, not, a, not a metaphor. They had their gods, the Catan, and then they blew them up and turned them into Pokemon. Uh, so we have someone who has taken on literal gods in one, and when he saw the Tyranids, he had determined, he said, this is the worst threat I have ever seen in my entire life, and I've been alive for 65 million years. So he went back home specifically for that reason. Uh, so that's already some cred the Tyranids got. <clears throat> but uh, I'll do I'll do a little bit of rebuttal now. So you, uh, I will admit, uh, the Tyranids, I, to my knowledge, don't have anything quite as big as a moon on their side. But if anything, that is a disadvantage to the Necromorphs, uh, because for one, Tyranids can eat dead stuff, no problem. Uh, otherwise, you know, like, combat with anyone would not be worth it, because they wouldn't be able to recycle their own bioforms that were slain, and they couldn't eat the corpses of the enemies that they had killed. It just would not be worth it, they wouldn't be a predator. But they are. Uh, they can eat dead things just as good as live things. Toss a whole tree in there, toss millions of corpses they leave behind, doesn't matter. Uh, and, again, Necromorphs, like I said, dead flesh, doesn't matter. Uh, and the Tyranids in the first Tyrannic War, I did. A, I know I mentioned this, uh, ate a moon-sized space station they apparently had that was completely organic in nature. So, if anything, the Brethren Moons themselves, this is food. This is a dinner bell for them. Like, not even a dinner bell, this is the, this is the main course of the Tyranids. They're gonna show up and go, oh, you, you've all assembled, you've brought yourselves to us, how wonderful. 
Uh, they can also make new organisms during a fight. So let's say first fight goes horribly for the Tyranids. Purely theoretically, by the way. I don't think it would. But let's say it does. Well, they're going to go, all right, what do we do wrong? How are we going to fix this? And then they'll make new organisms, uh, change the existing ones to be able to combat what they fought uh, that the Necros have the, uh, the first time around. And uh, another thing about that, uh, Necromorphs kind of need to uh, infect other people uh, to, you know, get going. Tyranids don't. They can make changes as they need. They just only do it as needed because don't fix what ain't broke. Um, there's also uh, also the fact, talk about the marker again real quick, uh, much slower as we said, but it also, even people under its control aren't perfectly under its control. I know in Dead Space 1 there was a unitologist who was feeling a little bit rough once he saw what the Necromorphs were. He's like, maybe this isn't, a, maybe this is not a good idea. If you're under the control of the Gene Stealer Kiss, you're, that's it. There's no breaking free of that. You biologically cannot go against them. And your time stops there. Oh, I still feel like I should let you go longer at this point. <laughs> I, uh, and I, uh, the man's reading out like it's a eulogy. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm not, I'm not good at hitting under the word count. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's uh, well. That being said, though, he did. He's bring up. He's brought up a few points there, Andy. Uh, so it's time for your rebuttal. Are you ready? I'm ready to go. And your time begins now. So first of all, I want to mention that Colin he cited the fact that the uh, the Tyranids can quickly adapt. There is a creature called Guardians in in uh, Dead Space, which within a couple of hours go from a human being to these disgusting creatures that are planted to fleshy pods on the wall. So the Tyranids and the Necromorphs have the same ability to transform and lest we forget the, uh, I can't remember what they're called, but the spreader versions which have the big proboscis where when they have a, a subject they kill, they stick a big needle in the forehead of the creature and like basically vomit all over them and you've got an instant Necron. So when they're in a combat state, they're necromorphs that can instantly transform bodies. And when you look at some of the cinematics, sometimes there are hundreds of these things. Um, when when we talk about things like the marker, for example, if you built a marker and you had it in proximity, that would infect the species. And even if you, for example, destroy the marker, like that, that happens in the first Dead Space with Isaac Clarke, the beginning of the second game has him rebuilding it in a fugue state. He literally shuts his brain off and subconsciously rebuilds the marker to start another convergence event. No matter how many times you try to get rid of the influence of the markers, although Colin said, oh, you can, you can, you can resist, you can resist to a point, but eventually it will continue to spread. And it will not just stop at one person. This is every person in the vicinity. This isn't just one focused atten at attention on one individual. This is an entire civilization infighting, spreading propaganda, making cults like a gene stealer cult. And for every one of them that dies, you've now got more members of your army. And for every one that dies, you've now made it easier and easier and easier to bring them to convergence to have a, uh, a hive mind blossom from the, uh, the the base of the marker and to, br to bring convergence to create a new... Uh, Necro Moon. One thing that's worth pointing out is um, obviously they are very uh, the, the Tyranids and the Necromorphs are very similar but again the Necromorphs they fight until they die and then they get up and they fight again because you can't get rid of them. They just keep fighting and keep fighting and keep fighting. The more biomass is secured the more Necromorphs and again they're going to be adapting. They're going to be spreading instantly. They're going to be evolving and this is a hive mind collective they are going to figure out the best way to attack you, use all your resources against you, and root you out root and stem. The scale of which magnifies with the bigger the enemy they're facing and the Tyranids, there's quite a lot of them. And I would assume because of the fact that they like to also consume biomass, that would play into the Necromorphs' hands and make them even better at spreading their infection and even better at adapting, improving, and consuming the Tyranids. And I think that's more or less all the time I've got. <laughs> that is there. Pretty much on the dot. Nice. Not too bad. Not too bad. I, of course, uh, have a few questions I'd like to ask both of you. I do have some slightly more tailored to uh, each of you here. I think I'll start with a more joint one, which is about the end game. So, Colin, I'm on you first. Um, the Necromorphs seem to have a plan which is when the tower slash the 
What's the, sorry, what's it called, Andy? The markers. The, the, the markers. markers. Sorry, my brain. Uh, the markers seem to only activate when there's enough biomass. Um, the Tyranids seem to just consume everything, and in fact, they left their own galaxy because they probably ate everything. Uh, how do you justify this con, particularly in an end game? What do you mean, ju- like moral- morally in- justify it? <laughs> I, mean, like, I think he means like once they win, once they win, then are like, they not dead? Like- yeah, is the Tyranids basically self-defeating? Oh no, because I mean, we they've it's kind of proven they travel between galaxies to eat food. The end game of Tyranids is eat the Milky Way and then leave and do it again. Like we, like I said, that the Hive Tyrant or Hive Swarm Lord, pardon me, has extra galactic material in his uh, in his sword, which proves they've done it at least once. And I know in the, I don't know if it was at the end of the book or if there was more after it, but the. I don't know when, when Barabbas Dantiak takes takes the hammer to the to the Pharos, the little eggs of the hive mind, mm-hmm. where it's like it changes course. So <clears throat> it's it's just gonna keep moving on. Like it's shown, it's been pretty explicitly shown. They're just gonna keep moving on. They don't. The end games keep looking for more food, uh, and uh, they've they've got a whole universe mm-hmm. to look for food in. That's a pretty good save on that question. I thought I might have had you there. <laughs> That's pretty good. Thank, uh, thank, thankfully, Lore has thrown me a bone. It's like, yeah, no, they've done this before. That's a, that's a nice save there, because that could have been self-defeating in the end. Uh, Andy, we're not just letting you off that easily. Um, is basically the Necromorphs just Tyranid food? As in, well, this, the Tyranids this... could therefore adapt to just con- constantly consuming Necromorphs. Well, here's the problem, though. From what I can tell, it, it, again, the big divider is the fact that the Tyranids consume and then they create brand new life forms from the ground up, whereas the Necromorphs instantly transform dead tissue into abominations. And with the point you said before about how the, the, the Tyranids have already conquered parts of the galaxy, are we not sure that they've basically plucked clean every part of the galaxy they've infected and don't have anything else to go for, so they have to lie in states of dormancy? They're playing the short game. The Necromorphs instantly are like right we're going to wait until the civilization is big enough then we're going to eat our fill make more more moons and then we're going to stop and here's the thing you also mentioned about the markers being activated only when there's enough biomass have you seen a hive fleet like bear in mind comparing a hive fleet to like dead space era humanity where they've got a few planets but it's like miners it's it's 2000 plus year era miners there's a big scale difference there. The, the necromorphs wouldn't have any... T- they go, oh, look, food, and they would instantly go for it. they instantly start infecting the populace. And again, mm. the, bigger the, the bigger the target, the faster they work. It works to their advantage to have bodies because it only takes one person to start off the mania, and then it only takes one necromorph to spread until it takes over an entire planet in a matter of hours, kind of like what happens in Dead Space. Dead Space 1, and you see the aftermath, Dead Space 2, you live during their initial hours of consuming an entire planet. I will uh, follow up with one last cheeky point where then, as we all know, the good old hive mind adapts. Uh, could it not just adapt to simply combat uh, the Necromorphs in the most effective way, which is not giving it biomass, knowing to destroy the markers? I have no doubt it could. Uh, the hive mind is fiercely intelligent. Uh, it's able to counteract uh, plans. I know uh, during the battle with the Tau, I don't, I don't remember if it was far, uh, far sight. Uh, no, I don't believe it was a different fight. Uh, the Tau just kept. They just got into this evolutionary arms war about producing. And while the Tau did win, I will admit the Tyranids the whole time were keeping pace with them until the very end. Where it's like, oh, the Tau are doing this, bam, different. The Tau are doing that, bam, something else, something new. Uh, and I feel like the Necromorphs, it's a lot simpler because it's just, oh, bioplasma. Just focus on that. Focus on the ranged forms and then just shoot. Uh, stay away because uh, that's the thing. Uh, you know, you know, you, you shoot a Necromorph. Uh, it takes a lot to finally bring that thing down. Go for the limbs. Cut cut the limbs, Isaac. Uh, plasma's just going to melt them. You don't need to worry about cutting the limbs if you just mm-hmm. go, right, you just, you're just going to melt. So I think that counteracting the, uh, the necromorphs would be pretty damn simple and uh, I'm just gonna say it I don't think the markers are going to overtake the presence of the hive mind uh, especially if a hive fleet is nearby and they've got you know the, the synapse creatures I do not think the presence of the uh, 
marker is going to be able to override the presence of the hive mind. And even if it does on a small scale, like, you know, you take out the synapse creature, oh good, now you just have this mindless, angry beast who's reverting to animal instincts, and the only ins- and the only instinct it has is eat. So even if you take out the Tyranid organ leadership, it's weird calling that what the Tyranid is, but the leadership of the hive mind, you still have the angry Tyranid to deal with. So I don't mm-hmm. think it'd be uh, that problematic adapting to the necromorphs. I guess I'd uh, give that same question to Andy there. Uh, wouldn't the Tyranids just essentially adapt to fighting the necromorphs? Well, here's, here's the, the, there's, there's a few flaws I found in that. One, to give you an example of Dead Space 1, when the humans found the marker, they were infected before they even unearthed it and knew, what, knew it was there. The marker can project from planet to ship without you even being in its like proximity. Its range is massive. And the thing is, as soon as it's in your mind, it's already starting to find ways of you rebuilding a new marker. So even if the first one breaks, you have a second one. And if the hive mind of the Tyranids even got a whiff of that, all of a sudden, their entire network is infected. And if you have the high fleet connected to a tendril, it goes up the chain. And if they don't cut it off quick enough, oh, it's in the heart of the hive mind. Oh no, there's markers everywhere across the universe. And the Tyranids are building markers everywhere. And now you're trying to destroy them. But maybe they're underground. Maybe you don't know where they are. Maybe new cults are building more and more markers and then they're spreading more and more infection and dementia and they're adapting to more Tyranids and the Tyranids are adapting, but then they're killing those Tyranids and adapting them further. It'll be an endless cycle of self-consumption until eventually the necromorphs win. So you're essentially saying the markers are kind of like a, you know, entrance nightclub stamp where you wake up in yes. the morning and you're like, how the hell did that get there? It's like, it's always been there. Sort of it's thing. always been there. It's the ones where you have to use the special like light to see them. You're like, oh no, I did go to that club. You're like, I don't remember going there. Exactly. And then it's like, it's there. And then there's video of you doing like shots from someone's belly button and that's the necromorphs, but more disgusting. Oh God. We all I don't know. know. I, th- I think depending on the person, I think I might take yeah. a necromorph. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know that Betty Buffy's hairy too. Oh god, yeah, sorry. All right, all right. Uh, speaking of already bringing up disgusting things, uh, let's get on to the last round. We call it the minute of hate, although it can be minute of uh, bigging up your own faction if you want. Mm-hmm. Uh, Colin, are you ready to unleash? Yes. Your time begins now. I'm just going to say it. Necromorphs are discount Tyranids. They've got the Gene Sealer cult thing, but the Gene Sealers do it better because they don't need a goddamn marker to be built. They just go out and do it. We've got the whole, oh, convergence. Well, have you seen what a high fleet does to a planet? I'd say that's pretty damn converging. You'd say, oh, the Necromorphs have hundreds of mi- millions of thousands. You know, they infect people. Tyranids don't need it. They can blot out the sun without any help from anyone else. Necromorphs need other people. Tyranids need them in the sense that they are food, which is... Uh, a whole lot of extra steps the necromorphs had in order to get a meal. Tyrants just show up, eat you, and leave. Uh, oh no, no, they, it's they feed the civilization. They need they need the civilization to be big enough. Oh, wow, great. Tyrants don't. It's it's just as simple as that. Tyrants don't need the civilization to be big enough. They just need organic matter, and a uh, whole lot of organic matter, both from the necromorphs and the galaxy they inhabit. Milky Way and 40k not exactly underpopulated. A lot of people in it to eat. So even if the Necromorphs completely obliterate And your high time fleet, stops there. Fuck! <laughs> oh, man. What a like, He's going to have Holy some freak. more. He needs some more time in the end questions. I vote uh, minute 30 of hate. Yeah. You start <laughs> banking your time. time. Uh, I'm not spe- good at the word count. <laughs> <laughs> there maybe is an opportunity in a bit. Um, Andy, though, it's your turn to do rebuttal slash uh, take him down a peg. Are you ready? I'm ready. Your time begins now. I'd like to buck the trend and end with a quote rather than some hate. So this was from Dr. Earl Serrano from Dead Space. It is unlikely that a race as advanced as this one, and this is not humanity, this is another alien race, would have remained bound to just one planet. Indeed, there is evidence to suggest their empire was widespread, spanning many star systems. They must have been trillions strong before falling to the markers. And perhaps that is the point. Allow a species to thrive until they are so many in number that they can no longer sustain themselves. Then descend upon their worlds to feed. Earlier on, Colin mentioned that the Necrons saw the Katan as gods. The Necromoons are gods. 
and you can't kill a god. Damn. Sheesh. I guess he's calling it there. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> can't kill a god. Well, Thanks. speaking of that, here's some uh, some godly awful questions. <laughs> <I'm> just saying, tear dents over flog me loot boxes. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Already bribing the judges here with bad content practices. Um, Eli, would you want to go first, or do you want me to? Uh, yeah, action? yeah, sure. I can go first. Um, so for Colin, here I'm gonna turn my my camera on for this. I explain the following: Ultramarines. What do you mean, explain the following? The <laughs> I think I'll explain it by saying if the Ultramarines were in dead space, there simply would be no more Necromorphs. They're the uh, Ultramarines. Kato Sicarius. Uh, yes, are, are you saying, like, how the they, they lost to the Ultramarines? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Uh, well, the answer to that is uh, the Ultramarines have access to 10,000 year old ancient technology, uh, an entire empire's worth of. Guardsmen, material, manpower, whatever you need to fight off a horrendous invasion. And they barely did. Uh, the Ultramarines were almost devoured. The first time they fought them, they basically were devoured. Uh, whereas the Necromorphs, correct uh, me if I'm wrong, but they've largely been foiled by some dude with a with a fancy nail gun, uh, basically. Uh, the last thing we saw was them consuming Earth, and that's the last thing we ever saw. <laughs> that's because EA murdered Dead Space. Mm, they're the true <laughs> gods. Uh, but, uh, the evil yeah, versus our hate. That's the answer. Uh, the Tyranids had to fight an intergalactic empire. Uh, the Necromorphs had to fight uh, one. I know the Imperium's already kind of dying. In Dead Space... Humanity is basically dead, and the Necromorphs are just finishing it off. The, uh, can you... the Tyrant has had to fight a galactic superpower, not a dying can... humanity. Can you uh, justify the GW authors not giving Tyranids a single major victory ever? <laughs> uh, I can justify it in the sense that Games Workshop's awful writing says, uh, you don't hear about Tyranid victories is why we don't ever <laughs> give them victories. <laughs> Uh, they had they had Octarius, didn't they? Uh, they they won Octarius in the end, didn't they? That's a kind of more Kinda, or less been confirmed. Where it's like <laughs> I don't know. I've read like that at least as of right now, it's pretty heavily swinging in the tier in its favor, especially mm. after Gazzy left. So, uh, alright. Well, that, my my question for Andy is kind of similar to what Colin already said. Didn't your faction get beat by just one guy? I haven't played yes. Dead Space, so <laughs> you can basically say whatever you want. Not gonna well, <laughs> well, here's here's the thing. End of Dead Space one. All that happens is Isaac stalls humanity's extinction because he builds a new marker at the beginning of Dead Space 2. Dead Space 2 finishes. He's not done anything apart from discovered, oh, I'm still not... I, I'm going insane. Dead Space 3, they discover, oh, these these necromorphs have literally killed trillions of aliens. We found their old civilization's ruins. Oh, no. Oh, no. Don't touch my Earth there. No, please stop. And the last thing we see is a uh, necro Necron moon, one of several, just munching on Earth. And again, I know the, the, the main thing Colin's point was, oh, Ultramar, etc. It's a civilization that's much bigger. But again, the prey is the force multiplier. Because if you think the Horus Heresy was bad, imagine the Necromorphs markers doing the same thing to all the Ultramarines and humanity and the Tau, and the Orcs, and the Eldar. Necrons probably be, yeah. But the thing is as well, it's like, I have a question for Colin, if I may. Uh, so the the Necrons we know have already destroyed completely one massive trillion person empire. They've, they've committed they've committed an, at, an utter genocide. And I'd do it again. In 40k, <laughs> how many species have the Tyranids completely destroyed Any? Uh, no. individual species I can't say but I can't say they've eaten enough planets to where you go oh they didn't take out the species they've taken out enough for and it doesn't matter if the Terrans destroy a species they eat more than enough planets worth of species they haven't killed the Tau that's depressing <laughs> Yeah, because the tower are uh, awesome. Yeah. It doesn't okay. matter if you kill like little, I've killed tiny empire. All, I've killed all of a species. If that species is like ten planets, if the tier, the Tyranids have eaten thousands of planets, uh, all, if you're talking I'm, about scale, it doesn't matter if they've eaten. All, ten, all I'm many saying more. is the Necromorphs almost they, they did all their work in the games in about a ten year span, and that was with only one Necromoon being like right, rolling its sleeves up and 
doing the coup de gras. Um, how long have the Tyranids been around now? A few hundred, few few millennia, a few hundred years, about a millennia. Been a while. Mm. Uh, I simply call fall on the question because the scale of humanity <laughs> and the aliens in 40k is so much larger that. It takes and a lot again, more time. It would create a. Mu- it's a force multiplier. The necromorphs would be quicker at their job if they had more people. More like a hive city, a hive city with one marker would be disgusting. Like That's the a same billion thing for people. The in- and again, <laughs> a hive swarm that would be disgusting. It would just like oh no, it's all gone wrong in like an hour. We've lost like a billion tyranids. What's going on? Oh no, we're all dead. I do have a, a couple of questions for the boys. Uh, I will start with Andy, just because he, he seems to be on a roll here, so I'll, I'll maybe hopefully throw him a curveball here. Um, is the Necromorph essentially an upgraded version of a Venus flycatcher, where they actually <laughs> need someone? They are essentially useless until someone gets near. So um, what happens? Are, is your faction just simply not defeated by everyone sort of like at night when you cross the road and you avoid the person on the other side for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> Is your faction simply just not dead in the water if no one goes near a marker? I mean, the, the the thing is, from what we know about the Necromoons, they are just dormant, they place a marker, they wait for a civilization to be big enough to eat, they eat them, then they go, that was lovely, that was a, mm, mm, that was a lovely meal, yum yum. I'm going to go to sleep for a few hours until we got another civilization to nosh on. And then they wait a few millennia, and then they do it again. If it were like, Tyranids would be a buffet, let's be honest. It'd be like, oh, look at all this yummy, yummy goodness, all this bug jus. Oh, it, it would be mental. And then again, they'd probably decimate the Tyranids and then go, we're going to go to sleep now and there's only a few left. We'll wait for them to bring up again, get, get back to strength, and then we're going to go for round two. It'll be lovely. I guess that'll follow up, follow up with one more, which is... Say, as you're, we know the hive mind adapts. Let's say it works out the sort of, I say the kinks, that's not the right word. Uh, it works out how the necromorphs operate. Um, what if the markers are just not strong enough to overpower the hive mind? Does that not fail instantly then? If it can't infect anything? I, not- well, if, if the, if the mark, I would assume that the probably the best case scenario would be they wouldn't be as effective on as they were on humans, but they would still probably do enough to make the hive mind go haywire and again their ground troops the necromorphs the ones with the big blade arms they would just be chopping up the neck uh, the tyranids putting them in a big pile making hive hive minds the big towering colossal creatures to eat more and to build and build more best case scenario you've still got to deal with the fact that your tyranids are eating each other and then consuming each other to make bigger ones and then when they're dead being turned into necromorphs and then becoming bigger necromorphs and it would just be like Octarius War times two. So it's kind of like maybe the hive mind treats it like the vegan option at a buffet. <laughs> it's just like everyone kind of goes, yeah, someone ordered that, but they're not sure they go near it. <laughs> um, I have one for <clears throat> Colin here, which is kind of in the same vein, which is um, I think of the devastation of Baal. As Colin said, it was a hive mind. All it thinks about is eating. And yet we see in the devastation of Baal, um, just for people who don't know, uh, the hive mind seem to personally decide to give a middle finger to the blood angels and ignored many other feeding grounds and planets to head straight for uh, Baal and uh, its many moons, showing that the hive mind perhaps actually is not just consumed by the need to feed, but also has a little bit of a petty side. Uh, thank you, Guy Haley, for writing that. Um, does that not mean that, in a way, the hive mind is susceptible to the corruption of the necromorphs? As it doesn't, it's not just an all-consuming thing. It actually has emotions such as vengeance. Would it not be susceptible to the necromorphs' uh, disease, and therefore, would it, in the end, the hive mind be corrupted? Uh, I would say it's not, because in that, <clears throat> uh, for one, in the same way, you know, just because, like, say there's a dog, right? If you kick the dog, it's not going to like you <laughs> oh, in the future. Poor dog. Oh, God. Uh, and uh, on top of that, uh, moving on from that lovely subject. We're not, so, not endorsed by law crimes. <laughs> no, we do not endorse kicking dogs. <laughs> no animal cruelty here. No, do not do that. But uh, so in the same way, it's a very cunning, intelligent, animalistic intelligence. It, of course, of course can still feel angry, but that doesn't mean it would be any more or less susceptible. 
Uh, there's a, especially because the hive mind is this sheer overwhelming presence, so powerful it can shut down wizards, basically. And in fact, uh, there's entire hive fleets devoted to closing the Great Rift now. Uh, I can't remember the name of it, but uh, I know there's at least one they made where its whole point is no more demons. So if they can adapt to demons, I have no problem imagining they can adapt to a pointy stick in the ground that gives you energy. Uh, <clears throat> as for the them ignoring feeding grounds, it's also uh, the Tyranids know, like, yeah, food is nice. doesn't matter if they invade us uh, while we're eating. So the Tyranids uh, probably just looked about and was like, right, this is the last, uh, the last thing in our way between uh, an endless buffet of everything in this sector of the galaxy. Let's go, let's go take care of that. Uh, which, as a reminder, they probably would have done had Kabanda not been like, I want, I know, I kill the Blood Angels. You don't kill the Blood <laughs> Angels, I thing. kill the Blood Angels. It's my, my thing. thing. I did it first before it was trendy. <clears throat> yeah, I did it before you did it. I killed the Blood Angels, not you. Uh, so they mm. probably would, just uh, looked at it. I would like, also yeah. add, didn't the, also the Hive Mind does somewhat recognize if that's not worth it. So when it went straight past Trezin's homeward of Solemnace, it went, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nah. Gonna... So we, I guess it could choose to interrupt. Um, yeah. But I so also... Worse. Oh, I, I have one last bit to add on that. Uh, as you did mention earlier, they, they did fight. The, I think it was Farsight. They uh, did end up fighting as the uh, Farsight Enclaves versus Tyranids. They were, two, they were two different Tau. Oh, yeah. There was, like, yeah, there was another was one. Two different main towns. If I remember correctly... Um, <clears throat> Ovesa, the mad lad that he is, the scientist of the Earthcast, he designed a toxin that basically destroyed that little tendril of uh, the Tyranids' sort of invasion fleet into the uh, Farsight Enclaves. Does that not mean that the Hive Mind slash Tyranids are susceptible to the death slash, I guess, necromantic disease of the uh, Necromorphs? That's a very good question. Yeah. I. I think that was just him poisoning Tyranids, which, yeah, you can poison Tyranids, but that doesn't mean the hive mind itself is any more or less vulnerable to it. It's The hive mind isn't in one Tyranid. You can't infect the hive mind because it is all of the Tyranids. Uh, it can cut off things, and it has done so. It's cut off Gene Stealer cults that, were, uh, that had fallen to chaos by some contrivance. So even if the Necromorphs do manage to get some Tyranids under their control, just the hive mind just going to be like... No, amputate that limb. Get out of here, and then they'll just they'll just leave and go somewhere else. The hive mind doesn't need like <clears throat> this food. It doesn't need that food. It just needs general food. So it doesn't matter mm. all the precautions you can possibly take. It's just gonna go somewhere else. And worst comes to absolute worst, you're they're never gonna beat the Tyranids because they can go between the galaxies no problem. So even if worst, absolute worst case scenario for the Tyranids, they lose handily every time, they're just, they're just gonna leave. Like they're never gonna <laughs> yeah. beat the Tyranids. The Tyranids are just gonna be like, all right, this galaxy clearly isn't worth it. I'm going somewhere else. Which again, don't think that's gonna happen, but between them being able to cut off limbs, like uh, as it were, of like infected gene stealer cults or Tyranids who might've uh, eaten something that isn't worth uh, adapting into. And the fact they can travel between galaxies, they're they're not going to lose. They're just going to go somewhere else. I guess it would, if it didn't go well, it would probably turn into high fleet cigarettes and milk. And just <laughs> 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 I would also like to say, and uh, you may call this a cop out if you wish, uh, but due to the narrative structure of 40k, you can, Eli you said, why can't, why didn't they lose to the ultra? Why did they lose to the ultramarines? Because you can't kill the ultramarines because they're. Oh, that's a good point. That's this is uh, the narrative of the setting. You're not getting rid of the right. ultramarines. May Whereas I... Dead Space, the narrative was. <laughs> Necromorphs are eating everything. Sucks to be you. Yeah, but can, can I mention? Because you mentioned about how they get away. But if the necromorphs manage to consume the biomass of their transport vessels, you've now given them the ability to get out of the galaxy and spread further. Oh, that's a good point. I guess yeah, we have but to. That is. Pick, you can't pick a, run, boy. Yeah, you can. Get it's you. intergalactic space. What do you and do? Again, pick a direction and, again, and hope you've went the we right don't one. No. If the Necromoons can or can't travel outside the galaxy, we just know they're really scary and we don't know much about them. And they're eating Earth. Oh my God, my house. That was. But oh we no. do know the Tyranids can and have done such. Whereas the Necromorphs, the best answer is. Mm. Probably. I guess we have to somewhat bring it to a 
conclusion here, Eli. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty, I'm pretty torn on this one because I was, yeah. I was not expecting it to be as it's well, my thing can adapt, whereas mine can adapt, sort yeah. of thing. So, hey, bear it's a grills constant. versus mare grills. <laughs> this is, this is very much you know, you know, reverse the episode here. Um, it's like think, no you. Um, I think I have my answer. Not gonna like it. I, <laughs> I, I think I'm I have mine. Like I think uh, I have mine. Uh, Eli, do you want to say who? I don't like that. First? I don't like that. Yeah. I'm, out of <laughs> I'm not a fan of that. Um, well, I think the Tyranids are stronger as a faction. Maybe they are uh, written into a corner because Games Workshop will never be able to make anything win. Uh, whereas the Necrophages are maybe not as strong, but it's hard to tell because I have, don't know anything about Dead Space. But they seem to actually win in their universe. Um, I kind of want to vote for the <laughs> underdog, but I also... I don't, is this, I don't know if this is allowed. Uh, in my mind, it's a tie. Is, this, is that allowed? Is that... <laughs> oh, so I guess that makes me the decider then. <laughs> in a way. Andy, we need the coin for Eli again. <laughs> <laughs> it is very tough because essentially one is the poison, one's the antidote, if you know what I mean. It's very... Uh, like cyclical and it kind of they in a way would feed off of each other uh my ultimate uh, my real answer is that actually i think they would probably merge into one thing <laughs> they would actually, the necronates yeah, they would actually the <laughs> the they just endlessly battle forever like mm. octarius but better I, I think it would, it would become literally one being of like the undead hive mind essentially mm. i think whatever happens with that i don't want to be the guy next door no. to that fight no. <laughs> like, yeah, i'm gonna real. leave now <laughs> i think uh oh, if i had to make a winner um i ultimately think i think andy i do have one last question which is the mark so the moons make the markers and are the moons essentially made of... What are the moons made of? They're made of flesh. Flesh. They are made of entire civilizations of people. So they basically go, we're going to turn your civilization into a moon. And then we're going to wait. And we're going to do the same thing again and again and again. So they've got several of these things across the galaxy. And they can travel through space. And they communicate with each other. And their are whole the thing moons, is... Do the moons have markers on them? No. They can project their... Their, their frequency independently from the markers, but they plant markers across the galaxy to draw civilizations into them. But when you're in the proximity of them, you go insane because you're like, oh, the frequencies are messing up my brain. I think in the end, I think I have to, by the way, by the narrowest of margins, <laughs> I think give it to Tyranids. And there's only one oh. reason for that, Dang. which is the fact that I believe the tuners would adapt in knowing that they would have to first of all avoid the crap out of the markers and also i don't think a tyranid could build a marker like i'm not convinced they a can tyranid, build ships a tyranid grows a ship i'm not convinced a tyranid can build with his little claws so uh i I'm, might I'm, I, I, I i don't know but, uh, it's honestly, it's, it's, that's the only. When you see the aliens that made the original markers before humanity, they're a bit weird looking. You're like, how do they do them with their little T Rex hands? It's like they managed it. Ultimately, and then, and then they... your co op partner goes, "What do you mean <laughs> that's an alien?" <laughs> honestly, it's the the only. If I if I saw a Tyranid build a Lego set, <laughs> and I still knew it could do that, I would obviously give it to Andy. Um, it's the only the only chink in the armor that I don't think the Tyranids yeah. could build. The, 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 the base Tyranids are so dumb in terms of like being an animal. I don't think they could actually build a market. Uh, to be honest, I feel like species. you could get them, um, they'd make a necromorph that had little hands. Instead of making like, <laughs> like, the humans, they're like, uh, oh, these things are useless. We're going to make blades. And they're like, oh, these things already have blades. We'll make little hands. It's like the inverse. <laughs> or if, or if they got like Gene Stealer cults, people to make. Yeah, thing. and, and, and there's the a genesis they're called and an echophage cult on the same uh, planet, and, and they have that their does own require a genesis thing going on. It requires there humans. To begin with. Yeah, true. Uh, I honestly, like, it's, so, it's so. I honestly, it could. Go, I honestly would give it to Andy if it was just the. If I again, if, if you if get the, over his hands, yeah, because it's like <laughs> it's literally <laughs> like side. Edward says a hand. You're not giving him a handshake. <laughs> so, mm. um, yeah, I. I mean, honestly, if the Tyranids could build markers, then I think Andy would... No offense, the Necromorphs kind of have it 
as soon as they're uh, in there, really. Um, well, that being said, though, I think narrowest of literally the narrowest of margins. I think Tyranids take it away just because of that. His reign uh, is uh, undefeated. Yeah, honestly, that little flaw. <laughs> but I think in terms of if the mark, if they already had like humans, if they're already human, if it's just Tyranids versus Necromorphs, it's kind of a it's just Tyranids, but if there are humans already around in the universe, like if you suddenly dropped the markers into the Milky Way, like um, Warhammer, I think the Necromorphs would have it hands down because then they've already got that like open start. Um, with that being said, though, I think everyone, I think it's a good, it's a good lashing. This one's very tough <laughs> to fit between <laughs> yeah. those two. Uh, obviously, it's nice to get some Dead Space in there because we haven't yeah. have. I mean, Dead Space, my beloved. Uh, they they have yeah, remastered it, but. They won't Remaster turn it, cool. And he's turned into a damn TV show or a movie, at mm. least. Come on. Um, with that <laughs> being said, that. though, we'll I think... Uh, <laughs> one day, one day. True. They already ruined it with Dead true. Space 3. I don't need it ruined another <laughs> yeah, time. Yeah, oh. <laughs> But I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to mention that Dead Space 3 was not well-received. Um, but oh, <laughs> but sorry, there's so many Tyranid losses, too. Loot boxes? That, um, was, that, that game introduced oh, loot boxes. They didn't look like wow. loot boxes yet, but it was the same yeah, mechanics. Yeah, like, just hey, no you know those noise. upgrades to your guns? Do you want these materials so you can make them earlier? Oh. Only it, it was five pounds. It, it would be like, too, like, you get a 50% chance of super material, and it was yeah, like, wait, this is weapon mod. This, this yeah, no this is a campaign. Right? It was, it was at the insane. time groundbreakingly obscene and everyone was like, oh, it'll it never catch on. What the heck? Oh, my God. It'll never catch on. <laughs> oh, is, is the... EA... Oh, is no, Dead Space 1 or 2 or whatever, uh, is it this basically the same storyline as like Doom 2016? Are they similar? Uh, uh, it's more like a a Resident Evil in space, I would say. <clears throat> yeah. oh, Resident, I Resident Evil, Evil. Okay. I think the designers were even like, we wanted to make a Resident Evil 4 oh, like, like, they, in uh, space. The, the designers were like, oh, when we were designing the Necromorphs, we looked at photos of car crash victims. You're like, what? And it's like, that's yeah. how they got them so messed Jeez. up looking. You're like, oof. The is, it play, is, like, is it awesome, crazy, crazy people want to make the beacon or whatever, and you're trying to stop them? Well, the first Some one, it's, 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 it's like made. the first one you're on a mine, you, 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 you go to a mining ship that's dug something up and they've sent a distress uh. signal and you're on their ship, the Ishimura, and it's full of necromorphs and you're like, mm. what happened? And then you go on the surface and then the second one's like, oh, <coughs> surprise, you're on a new planet and the populace is currently being con converted into necromorphs. Uh, Have fun. See. Can't explain how hard the name of the Ishimura goes. That... Still mm. in my brain, Ishimura. <laughs> uh, the ship is just iconic. Um, maybe I'll play this game someday. It's so maybe, good. Maybe we should so stream. Fun. I'm not gonna lie, just stream <coughs> Dead Space One. But why not? <laughs> just, Hell yeah. Stream any video games. Get a, and, uh, get a mod where you just put like a Space Marine, Ultra Marine, symbol, like, <laughs> on, and you get away with it. Um, with that uh, being Isaac, said, though, Isaac, Isaac Clark's scarier than any Ultra Marine. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it seems like you it. Heard Gunner Wright yes. swear. Holy shit. <laughs> Isaac Clarkius. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, with that being said, though, thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, again, you have to let us know throughout, like, or even at the end, sorry, who uh, you thought maybe won, or do you think any of us, and my, or maybe my reasoning about the not having opposable thumbs on the Tyranids <laughs> is the real downfall of it. Um, oh, hope you guys Gene Steelers, Gene Steelers have hands. Uh, I guess it, 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 it all depends on if there are humans around. If there are humans around, no offense, Tyranids have lost instantly. But I mean, but like gene stealers are their own thing. They don't need humans, right? Because they're just. I didn't think of that. I guess technically, oh, like, like, well, I can't switch now. But I do it now. <laughs> oh, they have no. claws. I'm looking at one right now. Yeah, but they have they have like opposable thumbs. They could on gene build stealers, a marker. I'm pretty sure. Is the that's the I, I don't they could just like that's scratch their one. nails off and then they're like these will work, you know? Yeah, they, yeah, they, 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 got, they have they're thumbs. Already. I can see it on their picture. They got thumbs. <laughs> Maybe it's not fair to change my answer then now. This is all assuming that they can build override the hive by, mind yeah. in the first place true i mean of all the things that could be overridden though i'd say a gene stealer or like a lictor would be the most likely because they're kind of their own thing anyways Dude, yeah, we should have thought of that no. we thought of that. <laughs> uh, with that being said though thank you guys so much for listening and watching obviously of course please uh, give us any suggestions for more verses or you know we we often don't get the opportunity much more hammer stuff just to mention other franchise and things that we all like so we'd yeah. love to hear your and, suggestions and this one was particularly fitting because it's almost halloween so we're like we need to do spooky stuff indeed 
Somebody yes. please comment things about endless space. Please let me talk about endless space. <laughs> please let I'm me know how you. bad you want to smash a neuro lictor. <laughs> no. This is why we get comments about your search history, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening and watching, and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace. Bye. Bye. I love you. <laughs>